This video is sponsored by Brilliant. More on them later. It's been a while since my last video on the Snowcap project, and a lot has happened since then, so first a quick recap. A little over a year ago I decided to make a new and improved version of my 3D printed snow tank and release the files so people could build their own. The issue was that 3D printing dozens of little track linkages was a real pain in the butt, so I thought it would be a good idea to make a Kickstarter campaign and try to raise enough money to pay for an injection mold and make them that way. The campaign ended up raising much more money than was needed just for a mold, so I expanded the scope of the project to procure other non-3D printable parts for the rest of the vehicle as well. In my previous video on this project, I was busy prototyping and testing different designs to figure out what worked best. After a whole lot of prototyping, I finally arrived at a design that performed well. I then ordered enough parts for 115 kits. <laughs> to my surprise, that first batch sold out within a week or two. In January, all the parts arrived and I shipped out the kits. It's been awesome to see so many snowcats coming together, with lots more on the way. More on all the packaging and shipping that I had to do later, but first let's have some fun with the snowcat and then talk about how the final product turned out. <laughs> what happens when you're trying to film and drive with one hand at the same time. <laughs> so it's clear that the Snowcat rips. It's really an awesome RC vehicle. But now I'll go over some of the issues. First of all, the 50 amp BL Heli 32 ESCs that were included in the kit have been burning out. This seems most likely to happen with the 600 kV motors. Now this isn't because the ESCs aren't rated for enough amps. The Snowcat actually only pulls about 9 amps continuously per ESC while driving at full throttle in deep powder snow. The Snowcat in this clip was running RDU Rover, so I was able to log the current data. This is what it looks like. You can see that it rarely ever exceeds 15 amps per ESC for more than a split second. The ESC burnouts are caused by super fast high current spikes that are most likely to occur when the motor is stalled and you raise the throttle quickly. It could also be because of false motor current windups, where the ESC falsely detects that the motor is spinning properly and dumps more current in. That's exactly what you see here, where the current went up to 100 amps momentarily. Luckily, there might be a simple band-aid to this problem. I'm not entirely sure yet, but I think that all you might have to do is lower the current protection value on the ESC through the BL Heli 32 suite software. To do this, you'll either need a Betaflight compatible flight controller or one of these cheap little ESC programmer dongles. When I first went to test this, I thought the current protection feature didn't work. I set it to 40 amps for each of the two ESCs and proceeded to drive around like a maniac. Even with the limit at 40 amps, I still managed to blow up an ESC and surprisingly burn up a motor, but I think that motor was compromised from other things. Later, I set the current protection value to 1 amp, and then it was clear that this feature does do something. The snowcat felt very lethargic. After that, I raised it to 5 amps and it behaved like this. 
So yeah, I was a little suspicious that it was still allowing for more than 5 amps per motor. I really didn't notice any less power than with the current protection turned off. To verify this, I set the current limit to 5 amps on this Snowcat running RD rover, and drove around aggressively. The motors weren't set up in the right direction, so that's why it looks like I'm having a really difficult time controlling. Anyways, here's the current data. You can clearly see that the current protection isn't really limiting any high current spikes. It does look like the average current is slightly lower over a longer time span. Despite this, I still have not been able to burn out an ESC with the 5 amp current protection limit set, so it seems like this might be a valid fix. Not sure, guess we'll find out as time goes on. I also have a hunch that the Hummingbird 50 amp ESCs included in the kit are just less robust than others. Other similar ESCs I've tested seem much more difficult to burn out. The next thing isn't so much of a problem as it is just a misalignment with customer preferences. I designed the drivetrain of the Snowcat to be optimized for going fast, like the type of driving you see here. For that reason, it has a 17 to 1 gearbox and 600 kV motors. I figured there might also be a couple people who wanted a little extra torque and less speed for towing and plowing and stuff like that, and for them I'd offer 300 kV motors. Now just switching to a lower kV motor still isn't optimal for towing or plowing, it just helps a little bit. For the Snowcat to really be optimal for these applications, you would just need a bigger gear reduction. When the kits went up for sale, to my surprise, way more people were selecting 300 kV motors than I would have thought. This made me realize that maybe I should have designed it differently with a lower gear ratio in the first place. But oh well, at least the people who wanted a fast Snowcat got what they wanted. Another reason why it's not very optimized for plowing or towing is that it's using sensorless brushless motors. These have almost no torque when they're first trying to start spinning. That's fine for trying to spin a propeller on an airplane or drone, but when you're trying to get a Snowcat started, it's a bit more of an issue. When starting from a dead stop, a Snowcat will sometimes jitter a little bit before the motors finally commutate and start spinning. It's only really an issue in deep snow. The problem isn't that prohibitive if you're trying to drive around like this. But if you're trying to do low speed precise crawling type moves, it's noticeable. When I was going through the footage trying to find clips of it jitter starting, I couldn't really find many, so it's clear that it's not that big of an issue. It's only really bad when the tracks are kind of seized up or stalled, and the motors just don't have enough low RPM torque to get them going. Censored brushless motors would be amazing, but unfortunately the Snowcat motors do not have sensors, and as far as I know there are not really any good cheap censored brushless motor drives on the market. Vesk and O-Drive are awesome, but they're way overkill and really expensive. I do have some censored RC car motors and ESCs on order to test, but unfortunately they would not be an easy drop-in replacement for the Snowcat. Hopefully I'll come up with a solution to this in the future, but for now we're just stuck with this. I mean look, it's obviously not too bad. I was still very much able to achieve all the Snowcat type things I wanted to do with my Snowcat. Well, maybe not all of them. This is what happens when you have no low speed fidelity and try to drive across a snowbank. Luckily, there are a few BL Heli 32 settings that will help a bit. Increasing the ramp up power setting basically just feeds the motor more amps when it's first trying to start. I've had good luck at 80, but definitely don't increase that without first decreasing the current protection as I mentioned before, because higher ramp up power makes it more likely to burn out an ESC. Also, enabling sign modulation mode seemed to help out quite a bit during my tests. Okay, now that we have those issues out of the way, let's have some fun. I've always wanted to do some long range FPV with my Snowcat, so I designed this body that mounts on the top and has room for two 10 amp hour 6 cell LiPos, or one 10 amp hour LiPo and a flight controller. In this case, I have an MRO Control Zero F7 installed inside, with an ESP01 Wi Fi module for telemetry. That's mainly just for changing settings and tuning, and the DJI FPV for video and RC control. I also put a mast on the top that holds a DJI FPV air unit. This helps get it up away from the ground for better reception. This build has the 300 kV motors. I do have RD Rover all set up, but I don't do any autonomous missions in this video, so it doesn't really get used, other than for the OSD. So enough technical details, let's go hit the slopes. So the ski resort is closed for some reason today, so I'm gonna see how far up there I can drive with the FPV snowcat. I just put a bunch of these little metal studs in the tracks, so I'll hopefully have better grip on the hard packed groomed snow. Okay, let's get started here. Bye. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to the left here and follow this chairlift line. Boy, my fingers are gonna get freezing. So I have full OSD in the goggle feed, which is nice, but unfortunately the recorded goggle feed 
does not show any of the OSD things. In here I can see my speed. I'm going seven kilometers per hour. I can see my voltage. I'm at 23.9 volts. I'm currently 215 meters away from home. It has not gone that far. <laughs> this is the 300 kV snowcat, so it's kind of slow. Um, I kind of wish I had the 600 kV motors in here now. That GoPro on the front sure does look like it's shaking a lot. Hopefully it doesn't fall off. Oh, geez, I just turned around. Oh, no! Oh, I'm starting to spin. It's starting to have a hard time going up the hill. This hill does get pretty steep. Hopefully those studded tracks provide enough traction to get up here. I think that might be a person ahead, but I can't really tell. Yeah, those are skiers. <laughs> Let's go say hi. Whoa. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I might go behind line of sight right here. It looks like kind of a little dip. Okay, I'm losing signal a little bit. I still have control. Now I'm 480 meters away. Still seems like it's holding traction pretty well. <laughs> oh, oh, it's definitely sliding a little bit when I when I start to go sideways. It definitely loses traction a little bit. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, now it's kind of seeming hard to go up. Oh, come on, buddy. You can do it. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can see it through the long lens here. Oh, there it is, way up there. Okay, I'm gonna move a little bit so that I can see it. Oh, yep, there it is moving. It's so far away. Okay, fingers are frozen, but I'm gonna continue on. It looks like I could almost keep going to the top of the chairlift without losing signal. Although my signal is dropping right now, so I think I probably will lose signal. Oh, it's getting real steep. The snow's getting softer too, it looks like. Oh wow, here's a flat spot. Okay, so I feel like if I go down behind there, I'm definitely gonna lose signal. Let's see if I can see the parking lot. Not really, there's definitely a hill there. Okay, so this is just a steep little mogul-y run type of thing before the top of the chairlift. Incredible, I'm gonna see if I can see it through here. Oh yeah, I see it, I see it. It's so far away and there's people coming. Maybe I should just go say hi to the people instead of continuing up the mountain. Okay, I'm just gonna go full speed down the hill now. Oh, I really wish I had 600 kV motors. Here's some people. <laughs> Get a little wave. <laughs> That's hilarious. Looks like there's some more people over here. <laughs> he waved. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Oh, more people. <laughs> Everyone seemed to like it. <laughs> I saw smiles. That's pretty good. There's really not a lot of contrast in the snow through this goggle view, so I'm just crossing my fingers I don't fall into a ditch or something. Oh, bumpy snow. Four wheeling now. I think I'm out of line of sight right now because my signal indicator is lower. I'm gonna see if I can't drive up to the top of this chair and see what there is to see. Wow. I'm still getting signal even though I was behind line of sight. That's hilarious. I don't want to go off that drop off. <sighs> oh, there's my tracks in the snow. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna spin around and go down. Looks like there's a person over here. I'll go say hi. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. I wonder what they think. It's harder to wave when I'm in steering mode. There we go. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? <laughs> full speed down the hill. So when I'm going down the hill at full speed, I'm still still only reading six or seven kilometers per hour. It doesn't really go any faster. Huh, I know wave. <laughs> Not as friendly. Oh my God, I can't move my fingers. It's so cold. Oh, well, hello there. Well, that was fun. I'd say that was a successful mission. The battery is only down to 23.6 volts. This thing hardly uses any power. I could drive so far. After the whole first batch of snowcat parts arrived, it only took me two weeks to get all the kits assembled and shipped out. But it was a lot of work. This is the Great Wall of Snowcats. And this is only just the tracks. <laughs> Not even any other parts. I pretty much worked all day for two weeks straight. 
I basically just had to do a bit of quality control to make sure the parts were made to spec, and then put all the components into boxes and ship them out. I feel like the UPS guy and I really bonded over these few days. Either that or he just hates me. So after the first batch of Snowcat kits sold out, I started the second batch of 150 kits. As of me recording this, there are only 35 of those left in stock, so if you're watching this video within a few days of it coming out and want one, it might not be too late. But if you're watching this long after the video came out, then it's probably too late. I don't have plans for a third batch this year, but maybe sometime in the future. Who knows? I've got more Snowcat content coming in the near future, so stay tuned. If you find RC Snowcats interesting, then I can guarantee you will love the science, technology, engineering, and math courses that are offered by Brilliant. Brilliant aims to create a culture of learning around inquiry, curiosity, and openness to failure for users of all ages and knowledge levels. You can master all sorts of technical subjects with topics ranging from calculus to chemical reactions to cryptocurrency. The best way to learn anything is by doing it yourself. Learn interactively with Brilliant's fun, hands-on lessons. Interactive learning helps you learn six times more efficient than watching lecture videos. I found their courses on scientific thinking to be fascinating and fun. At first, I assumed I would breeze right through them, but I was wrong. There are some really interesting problems that seemed like basic physics, but they were things that I had never really thought about. Brilliant starts by explaining why the concept actually matters and what it's all about with interactive visuals. Rather than just solving repetitive problems, they teach you the intuitive ideas behind topics like algebra, statistics, algorithms, and much more. You'll come to understand how STEM actually works and how it's relevant to your everyday life. Join the millions of people already learning on Brilliant with a special offer just for my viewers. Head to brilliant.org slash rctestflight to get started with Brilliant's interactive lessons. The first 200 viewers will also get 20% off an annual membership. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Ah, gee whiz. I sure do have a lot of these RC Test Flight Snowcat kits I have to put together. <laughs> hey Colin, would you be willing to help me out with some procurement? I don't know, man. I don't know about procurement. But how about mm -hmm. some procurement? Oh, yeah. Ah! Hell yeah, brother. The snowcat parts have arrived. Snowcat, 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 snowcat. The snowcat is here. It's been packed with care. Brothers and sisters. Snowcat parts are shipping soon.